So, finally, sir, I was actually very taken aback, I would say. My eyes were very open today, speaking to you, because I never realized how much you've done to push the boundaries of Karnatic music. Because when I look at your music, I think of someone who is deeply rooted in the Karnatic Sampradaya and someone who has a lot of bhakti towards the Definitely. tradition, the music, and um, you know, the Hinduism behind the music as well. But for someone who on the outside has this conservative appearance towards his music, you are truly innovative and um, I would say a game changer. You have constantly elevated Carnatic music to different levels, pushed its boundaries and drawn inspiration <laughs> from traditionally not Carnatic themes. Yeah. So, See, Basically, I listen to every genre of music. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I have shed tears uh, listening to some Beethoven's, Mozart's, and like that. Uh, basically, it is emotion. You know, emotion is bhakti. Mm -hmm. My concept of bhakti is whatever uh, our ancestors have given us. You know, the bhakti towards the Creator, the the, the reverence and thankfulness. Mm -hmm towards the creators. That is more important to all of us than music. If the music is not going to lead us to those feelings, mm -hmm. of course, the, 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 the aesthetic and beautiful feelings are there, but again, they are transient and not permanent. So you should have a permanent goal. That is where you have bhakti. So or else you cannot understand Tyagaraja. So at least to understand Tyagaraja's heart, uh -huh. or else you would uh, easily name him as a the, the choicest, uh, what to say, uh, net man. <laughs> Our parents are not mad man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why he has to lament so much on a that, person that is who is true. not seen? <laughs> Just heard of that drama. Mm -hmm. So you have to visualize. So bhava has no scientific explanation. It has to be tasted. So that is what is bhakti is. I, but you know, but I how cannot... does that bhakti? Um combined with the bhakti for music itself. So there's different flavors, right? As you, so you must under, try to, I don't know if any of us can fully understand Tyagaraja's bhakti towards Rama. I can easily, uh, in uh -huh. my own way, I can explain to you. It may be useful uh -huh. to you. See, the notes are there. The notes, the seven notes, 12 notes, 16 notes, whatever. Okay, any note mm -hmm. in, in, in the whole world, in any form of music, has a power to uh, arrest your attention and do something to your heart, okay? At least to your ears, mm -hmm. something, <laughs> to your mind, okay? <laughs> so when they move, they correspondingly make some movements in your heart. Mm -hmm. Like even a painting is a movement, everything, dance is a movement, like that music also. In music, it is combined with that primordial sound, which is the reason for the whole creation, that omkara. So that is the secret that we should know from the Vedas or our from culture. We should not see sound, we should not take uh, sound for granted. We give the utmost importance for the sound because that is the whole reason for the whole creation. Mm -hmm. So when you immerse in that uh, Omkara and see the seven notes as dancing from that, that as a base, that itself is a bhakti. I am not telling, this is Tyagaraja's explanation. Then. The, only the notes cannot give you an idea of the creator. So you associate a form that is convenient for the mind. Finally, these seven notes, okay, are going to disappear on the base note. And you will go to silence mode. Then you will don't need Rama or Krishna or nobody. So that is a secret behavior. So now you know how bhakti helps you to take yourself back into yourself, mm -hmm. like that. So that is my concept. So I can understand, accept anyone who has a taste in music. I don't expect, honestly, I don't expect them to have bhakti. Uh -huh. If they have, it is an advantageous thing. Mm -hmm. But th it's really interesting to me. I never thought about exploring bhakti to understand the intentions of the composer. Because I think early on, as music students, we're so obsessed with perfecting Kamboji Raga, <laughs> or be it whatever, Todi, and then perfecting that, and then in the piece, I must perform, deliver every single Sangadi that my Guruji taught me. That is and that is, that first encapsulates your mind, and it's only after 
all of those things come to second nature that you can explore a concept as let me try to understand the emotion behind Tyagaraja Swami's Really, that's the whole altogether a different mm -hmm. world of emotions. How many hues he gives, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's maybe uh, why he chooses this ragam to like ex even yeah. express it in the first place. Definitely. So yeah, that is one way of uh, appreciating him. <laughs> So here I believe in Western music also, they have appreciation course. So what do you appreciate in music? Mm -hmm. Not only the perfectness and sweetness of Kamboji. So you have to visualize, oh, there is more Kamboji. From this point, there is something more. The performer and the Rasika or the listener should know that. For that, you should know about Tyagaraja.